Well today I've got an absolute treat for you. We're going to be collecting some gecko eggs. That's right, some gecko eggs. Uh, I do breed a few geckos. In particular these are boreal geckos which I really find attractive. And here's one right here. They're a little bit quick and agile as you can see. And um, when you build a good cage for them, they just love getting right in there nice and deep. Now look at these gorgeous little animals. They are the, the most arboreal creatures. So these are the northern velvet geckos. Um, in particular, these guys we're breeding particularly for a reason, for, is for that black eyes. So those really dark black eyes is what we're breeding these particular guys for. And um, it seems to be a genetic trait and it's proving to produce some really good quality babies and not just normal looking babies with black eyes, but some very special babies indeed. Now, these guys, like I said, are absolute arboreal beasts. They like to climb glass, and unfortunately, they do poop on the glass a fair bit. Look at that. You know, how good would that be to have that ability to be able to climb up a very sheer surface? Now, what we do is um, I give them small boxes with a peat or sphagnum mix. You can do whatever you like and you moisten it up, very similar to what you do with vermiculite, but we keep this nice and moist. Uh, for two reasons, they use these boxes, they get in there, and it helps them to shed. So just like a snake, the geckos will actually do a pre-lay shed. So they'll drop their skins before they go and lay their eggs. And then you've got to start the uh, arduous journey here, burrowing through and try, trying to find the eggs. And that looks like an egg there. Now, the, the beautiful thing about these particular geckos, and most geckos in general, is they lay a two eggs at a time, and there they are, the two eggs. Look at that. I'm trying not to move too much. So the two eggs <laughs> nestled down the bottom there. Gorgeous white gold, as I like to refer it to. Now, just like the snakes, I'm using a suspended incubation method. These are great little tubs um, and rack systems. You add your water or your crystals, water crystals if you like. I just use water, it's quick and easy and never lets you down. And if you're worried about it having any bacteria or anything in it, you can boil it first and then let it cool down and then you can use it so it becomes sterile. Uh, you use your rack system. And then what we do is you slowly, because you know, I've got giant hands, in comparison to these tiny little eggs. Now just like python eggs, we don't want to rotate them. We want to try and keep them so that they point upwards at all times. I take the rack out, that way I can use my giant hands. Put the eggs in the rack, like this. And yeah, the eggs aren't super white, that's because they've taken on a little bit of the uh, substrate there for the colour. So there's usually a bit of tannin in there, which is the coloration. Let me take the eggs out, and two gorgeous eggs. And what I like about these particular racks is they've got a little divider in them. Once you put the lid on, the lid basically seals the compartments off, so you've got four separate little areas there. Now I just get a chalk pen. I love my chalk pen. And um, you can just write on it. So these are my black eyed. And today's date. Clear this back up. Now, sometimes you've got to look around because if you've got multiple females in there, it's not unusual that you'll have a couple of girls laying eggs at the same time. So that can confuse things if you've got multiple different things going on at the same time. But within a cage, I'll have a project going on, making sure that they don't run and jump out. And like I say, these guys are quite adept to jumping and flicking around in there in that cage, which is pretty cool. Now we're also expecting some snake eggs again, that's right, some more snake eggs. So we'll move down this way. So there are our gecko eggs. They're gonna go into the incubator at the same temperature as we keep our python eggs. This makes it nice and easy. Now this female here, I have to admit, I did cheat a little bit this morning. This female, I seen laying some eggs, so I knew she was laying eggs. Um, 
she's sitting at 23 days pre-lay shed, so that's a little bit early for an anteresia, especially a maculosa. And this is probably the reason why. That's quite devastating. Look at that. Look at that there. So the eggs are small, they're discolored, and basically they're all infertile eggs. So what's happened here? As I've always said before, the female's done the right thing. She's produced the eggs, right? So she's produced the ovum, she's gone into ovulation, she's gone through all the hard work, the follicle growth, all the rest of it. The male, unfortunately, it was the end of the season, He's got in there, he's had one last ditch effort to impregnate this female and just like everything, he's only got a certain amount of good viable sperm. And this is towards the end of the year and this female here is basically the last female that he mated with for the year, so he's got no good stuff left at all. Um, we'll just double check that, but she's wrapped around them really weirdly. She's not, as you've seen before, they sort of cone shape and lay up, she's sort of zigzagged all over the place bit of a mess there and she's quite protective as you can see for all good reasons because that's what mamas do it's not her fault she still thinks that they're good eggs and as you can see they're soft they're discolored they're odd shaped they're just all over the place and she's really confused about the whole situation here look at that so he's still just like I always do, I'm going to check to make sure that she's got no, nothing left inside. There's one slug she's still critically hanging on to there. Another slug. So we just want to double check to make sure she's got nothing that's going to cause any problems. Get on the track for her. And as you can see, you, know, you give her a little, little rub on the belly. And if there was something there, you'd see it, it'd be twisted, or it'd be enlarged, it'd be wedged in there. And like I've said before, eggs that are left inside can cause a lot of issues. Uh, they can basically become foul and start to break down and cause septicemia, which is blood poisoning and kill the snake. Or what can happen is it will combine to the oviduct and tear if you try and manipulate and get them out. Or in sometimes it'll break down naturally and be able to pass. Who knows, it's, it's a potluck thing, but for me, um, I want to make sure that the animals are nice and happy. And if there's a problem, get it to the vet and get the vet to assess the situation and get us through that. Now, I guess one of the best things about a bad situation like this is the female hasn't expended a lot of energy. She's expended energy, but not a lot of energy as she would doing viable eggs. So she will be able to recover a little bit better and be nice and fighting fit for next season. Unfortunately, we're left with this, which is <laughs> devastating. Devastating for a reptile breeder. But hey, that's what happens. You get the good parts and the bad parts. Now, what did we miss out on? Well, genetically, I missed out on hitting some albino spotted pythons because there were two head-to-head -head albinos um, that produced this awesome variety of shapes <laughs> I guess the shapes look at that almost, almost like a comedy of errors these shapes look at them but that poor girl so we got <laughs> two four six eight ten ten slugs so basically we're going to be weighing those just like we would for fertile eggs and we have done previously. We can weigh the female, weigh the slugs and then we can see exactly how much basically energy she's deployed into producing that rubbish and get some food back into her and get her some size back on for a great season next year. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you do breed with reptiles. You get successes and you get losses. Until next time guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give us a like. Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Till next time, I'll be crying over my slap.